Be following Willie more and more. I want it! Back in the NRL. As Willie Mays. I've forgotten how big Willie actually is. Perhaps the presence of Willie and the Panthers looking at his imposing frame. I'm a 25 minute man. Plus. Oh, you got skills, son! <laughs> Uppercut right hand by Big Willie. Too fancy for you! Welcome to The Take with Willie and Ian. My name's Ian and I'm sitting with <laughs> Willie. How are you, Willie? I'm good, mate. How are you? I'm a little bit dusty, actually. I thought I'd To be change. honest. What do you think about the start? Do you like that? That's all right. That's all right. You <laughs> could do right. better. You could I'll do go, better. I'll, back, I'll go back to the old one. Um, what did yeah. you do last night? There was nothing happening. Nothing happened at all last night. Yeah, not much. Eh? Did you I watch just, the game? You did, didn't you? Yeah, I watched it. <laughs> I watched it. It was, um, yeah, it was disappointing. Being out there at... You know, out at Homebush, I had a couple of events out there. Shout out to Matty Hill, does a great, great events. Um, did a couple of things with the NRL. I was out there with Joey. Um, it was good. You know, the atmosphere was wasn't wasn't like I expected because it was a packed house. Packed, everything was sold out, and I just I don't know. You know, I always think when I play in Queensland and Queensland are behind. You don't. You do not hear anything else but Queenslander, Queenslander. It's deafening and it lifts them. You could hear a pin drop. You know when the when the game was on. You know was on a tilt. It was. Um. It was a little bit weird. It was freezing cold. I get that. Maybe I missed because my young bloke. I coach his rugby side and he play. At, we train on a Wednesday, so I only literally walked in just as there was there was a little bit of music and action and lights and looked good. What was the pre-match entertainment like? Did you see any of it, or were you doing the talk? I was doing, yeah, I was doing a uh, few events, so I didn't really see that because it's um, always awful. It's not good. It's our big. It's 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 our it's our Super Bowl. You know, I had like, the Veronicas. Can last we year. get can we get someone else? The get Veronicas. Billy Idol back, maybe. Oh, just give him a chance. <laughs> give him I a mean, chance. I mean, we got some superstar people over here, man. Like, just I don't know. Get Rihanna over here. <laughs> Beyonce. I don't know. Like we we can we can sort of reach out. This is the 20, Rolling this Stones. is twenty twenty two. You know, we we got we we generate a lot of money through Origin. People pay a lot of money for those tickets. Entertain. It's entertainment, man. Like yeah. I understand the game is entertaining enough, but come on, halftime, pregame, all that kind of stuff. They need to get the crowd into it. Yeah, I just think um, yeah, it was it was a bit lackluster. The crowd. It was just hard. It was hard for him, I suppose, to get in because the game was like. It was, had a balance the whole was pretty even the whole way. We didn't play our best football, which was which was disappointing because this game was so important. You know, like I'm, I'm, you know, going over to Perth. That's a neutral ground. You know, they used Queensland have more supporters than us, and then we've got to go to Suncorp for the decider. Hopefully, yeah. That's, well, that's hard, mate. Do you know what? Well, let's let's actually drill into the game a little bit because, um, and because of your deep commitment to the good people that listen to this show and yeah. to, you've watched the game this morning. Well, I did because I just couldn't, I couldn't really watch it last night because I was doing, I was talking a lot and I was, it was, I had to do things at half time. Um, yeah, I couldn't, you know, and the tickets were like, you know, they were way up. So you're looking down, you couldn't really see it. So I watched it. I watched the game this morning again to really get a, a feel for it, like with the momentum changes and all that kind of stuff and mistakes and defensive lapses. And, you know, we, these things are very fixable, but, you got to you got to execute on in game one. It was disappointing because we could that game we should have won. We could have easily won that game if we executed right. So well, let's let's talk. There's there's a few talking points out of the game, I guess. Um, the first thing that I I noticed this live, and obviously the first first tackle of the game, just about Isaiah Yo comes flying out of that. Now, if he's not having to go off for an HIA after that. Like, I know Origin's different, but if we're fair dinkum about protecting the player, right, he goes stumbling off, then he's he's halfway facing the wrong way in the next set. And I'm going, I think maybe someone should... Where's the independent oh, doctor? No, I hey? saw that and I was like, oh, no, 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 I no. that's not a good start. Yeah, and he, he, he come good. He come good. Like, yeah. he, was, he was rattled for a little bit, mate. It's Origin, I think... You know, I'm, I'm all for the pro HIA and looking after these players and they're, you know, but fuck, it's origin. Just, Just give him, get give over him, it. Give him five give minutes. Him, yeah, give him like, five minutes. And go he got, he got through it. He toughed it out. I think he played 80 minutes and he played, I, I thought he was, he was one of our better players. Um, But yeah, that hit, you can't go a big pupper like that. No, he was a big He high. dropped his shoulder into him and like, you can't. Yeah, you, you, there's, there's ways to tackle that kid, and he's he's an absolute beast. He didn't play that many minutes. He played he 16 minutes, and then he played the last 
eight. Yeah. I don't understand. I think maybe because guys like Carrigan, Ruben Cotter, welcome back, Cotter. <laughs> welcome um, back, Ruben Cotter. Welcome back, Ruben Cotter. He's got his own show. That kid was outstanding. They picked Origin players, man. Carrigan, Cotter, Cobbo. Mm. God damn. 19 years old. Nanai, 19 years old. They just... I thought he broke his leg. He's got, he's gone off with the ankle. Oh, magic going, sponge or something like that. They've called the Medicab and then he's back on running around like nothing happened. Little, uh, they breed him tough in Queensland. Little jab jab. There could have been a little jab yeah, jab. Yeah, you do not get carried off like that and then just sprint back on. And if you're like, Todd Payton, don't expect Jeremiah and Nanai to be lining up for you this yeah. weekend. Would be my best. So there's, there was a couple of little things, you know, defensive lapses that was disappointing. Like, when Ponga was on that short side, you know what's going on there. If you know Payne Haas didn't move off the line, that was man on man there. So if, as it, I'll give pe- people a tip at home: if you're Payne Haas, all you got to do is come straight off your line, cut Ponga's left foot off. You want him, you want him to go over. So if you if you cut his left foot off, Crichton was at marker, he would have stopped it easy. If you put inside pressure on, then it was man on man. Tupo would have stayed out wide and dragged Holmes or Gags, whoever scored that try. Was it Gags or, or Holmes or? Or Cobbo. No, it was the the Holmes try. Yeah, Holmes, yeah. yeah. That could have been easily stopped. The yeah. scrum, Paulo should break break friggin' Lindsay Collins' arm to get out of there quicker. He held him on a little bit. You can do that. You can do it. You know, mm. you just got to get out quick. Tarek Sims overchased. The left side back row, we just – that was just a mislap. That never happens in club land. No. Never. And Cherry got that um, – you know, that, that trial, that, that was really disappointing. I could have got through that gap. You know, like it was, was just very like, slow. you know, Paulo knows that he, you know, he needs to get out as quick as he can. Like Tarek probably got out too quick and probably thought that that's a trust thing. You're thinking that Paulo's going to have that and whoever the lock is, you're going to cover all those, those spaces because that's the thing. In origin, you just do your job, expect those other guys to do their job. It was just a mislap. Paulo got stuck in there for that half a second and that's all it took. You know, if, if, if Tarek doesn't chase out to, so hard and that straightens his hips up, he tackles him. But he was sliding, he couldn't really stop. Shoulders facing that way, couldn't couldn't really um, plant his feet. Otherwise, he would have jammed him. But he would have been relying on that prop to get out there. I think if you look at the reasons why Queensland won that game of football, you can boil it down probably to two things. The first was the forward dominance that Queensland had because their forwards, there's no question, if you're a New South Wales forward, you need to wake up this morning and realise that you got handled badly. The second thing was probably the organisation in the halves. And I think, you know, Cleary's wearing a lot of um, a lot of sort of crap on, on social media this I morning. I don't think he played it. that bad. I don't think he played bad, but he, he if he plays well, then New South Wales look better, you know. And I think he, he was off. It's probably his worst origin game that he's played in a while. And, and I think... And that's saying People, something because I thought he played, you know, like he was, he's just got high standards. People have really high standards about, for that kid. And he would have been disappointed in himself because he just didn't pull the trigger when we had to. And the six biggest, the six biggest meter eaters in the New South Wales side were the backs. Yeah, Tupo, Toto. Tupo, Teddy Tolo, was out. What a Tesco. captain's knock. Teddy. Oh, oh my God. Um, but starting Liam Martin? No, I'm not starting Liam Martin. I'm starting uh, Cam Murray. Yeah. I don't care if he hasn't played him that many games because he's a genuine ball player. And we could have skinned him on that right side, that right our right edge there left. If Cam Murray has those, as, as I was saying last week, if we got um, Isaiah Yo doing that in the middle and then you got Cam Murray ball playing on the edge or he, or he can ball play or he can dig in himself, like he has more, he has a higher skill set than Liam Martin. Liam Martin, he could come on in the middle. He can come on and just fix fix wherever. Like he can play on an edge, he can play in the middle, he can play wherever. I don't think he's a starting right side back rower at origin. He's a good player. But I just think when Cam Murray come on, he was playing those little block plays and Teddy was out the back. He's got a good combination. That That's when we look really dangerous. Yeah. You know, and even when we went left and got early ball to Nana, I mean, um, to, to Luai, mm. we look pretty good because... That's where Jack White, who plays probably possibly his best origin game. Yeah, for sure. He played outstanding. And I think, um, you know, if we had to pull the trigger in the right time and our forwards dominated, because we got we, we got dominated. Yeah. you got to you got to get that ascendancy in the middle before you actually try and pull the trigger. And we just weren't doing it. And it's hard for Cleary to do stuff off a, off a forward pack that is not getting, the you know, the, the quick play the balls and everything like that. You know, Big Tino was in there, Carrigan and, and Cotto and – you know they were they, they got us in the middle, and I, it was and, and I don't and I thought I knew that they had a pretty good pack, but I just didn't think that they would get over the top of us. I honestly didn't. I reckon if you talk so, about- sorry sorry, and I would start Paul as well. Mm. 
you know, I don't think Paula had his best game, and I just think he's probably used to starting a lot. I just and I would have had Big Reg coming off the bench, off the back fence. You know, like I don't think he started the game that well. No, he didn't. And I think you know, if you look at the Queensland spirit, people talk about the Queensland spirit. I've worked it out. Will. We've said it so much; it's fucking there, isn't it? But do you know what it is? I've worked it out. What Queensland do is they pick the blokes that they know, like Ruben Cotter, who plays his first game, and everyone goes, he's an Origin player. What that means is that he will never stop for 80 minutes. He will tackle anything that goes in front of him. He'll do the the dog shit stuff that no one else wants to do, and he'll just keep doing it. Mm. And I think if you look at New South Wales, we've picked a heap of ball players, the flashy players, the players that look good at club level, and they've left someone like Jake Trebojevic out who will do that sort of dog shit work in the middle. He will just come up off the line. He won't miss a tackle. He would not have missed those tackles. He just, he just comes through the middle. So Queensland, what they do is they go, all right, we've got... We've got good ball playing halves. We've got speed out wide with Holmes and we've got Cobbo. We're going to pick a workman like Pack, your Dallas Johnsons and your, you know, that sort of player. And then we're just going to get Nate them Miles. to do Yeah, they're going to do the work in the middle and then eventually we're going to score points. And that's just the way that they pick. And every year New South Wales go, oh, this bloke throws 50 offloads. Let's yeah. pick him. I just, yeah, I wouldn't have, as I said, like I would have picked Jake Trebojevic ahead of Madison. He just does all those little things. When, um, you know, Munster... Have a look at the front page there. Just <laughs> <laughs> grow up, Ian. Um, I just think well, you know little things with um, you know when when Munster made that break through the middle. Jake Chaboy would change mission that tackle. No, and he does all that hard stuff, and he's another genuine ball player. I just think we got the balance mixed up. Yeah, you know we still have the talent, and we, I, th- I still think we can win the series. But I think there's going to be a few changes. Would and- you what what changes would you make? Look, I think Trebojevic needs to be there. Um, I think that, to be honest, I know Liam Martin's a great player and he's tough and whatever, but... Just leave him on the bench. I, I want Tyson Frizzell in that side, you know, with his leg speed. I'd have Frizzell his, off the bench as and well. And his defence. I, I think Tyson Frizzell has shown he is the sort of player that just does that work that the Queensland Fords do, right? Yep. You've got Isaiah Yo, you've got Murray. How many ball-playing locks do you need, you know? I think if... If you look at the halves, you're not going to change them. If no. you look at the way Whiten played, fair enough. Now, the back line's you, not changing. You can't pick Crichton on the bench because no. if Katoni stands, Staggs doesn't get injured, where does Crichton go in? Yeah. Like, honestly, he just I, I don't. don't. Where, he where just does doesn't. He, go? he doesn't. Well, he gets another, you know, Jamie Bure sit on the bench or or Raper sit on the bench for 80 minutes and then never play. Who do you pick? Again. Do you pick a Nico Hines? I would. Yeah. For, for, well, what about what, what if Latrell's back? I think if Latrell's back, you probably don't need Nico Hines because... But where do you put him? Where do centers, you put Jack? In the centres. You put Jack at... Because Jack's a left side centre because he's left arm carry, right palm. And yeah, so is Latrell. that's true. Well, so then, he's not a right side centre. Well, then Whiten goes to the then, bench. So Jack, so Jack goes Jack to the goes bench. Jack goes to 14. You know, but like, uh, that's, that's going to be hard. And that could be maybe game three when Latrell's back. I'm I not sure. I've heard Latrell's lost two. like eight kilo. Latrell's looking like a beast. So do you put him straight in? I think he warrants it. Probably. He's just one of those kids, man. He can just you just give him the football any level, any time. He just performs. Also, Will, we're both forwards. If you don't fix a forward pack, oh mate, yeah, then you don't. You don't. Latre- it doesn't matter where Latrell. Latrell doesn't. Plays. Yeah, it doesn't you, matter. Exactly. It's See, last year we dominated in the in the pack. Last three or four years we've been dominating in the forward packs. Yeah. You know, you've had your Paulos had you know Jake Trebojevic. They've been parts of it. Boyd Cordner, um, you know, uh, like Payne Haas. All these guys have had nearly man of the match performances. If it wasn't for like Turbo and Latrell and, and, and Teddy, you know our back line is still is star studded. Our forwards, they're the ones that are going to cop it. And like even though like Cleary's copping it in the media, all those all those forwards will be known that we let him down. They let they let the team down. Yeah, you know, and only in little little bits. Like Origin's the hardest fucking game of all time, you know. But just in little things, a couple of little passes that went astray, hit the ball, uh, hit the deck a couple of times. Some, some, you know, some. It's just the execution, you know, like just the little tip-ons and stuff like that were a little bit off, a little bit jammed in in each other's pockets a little bit when they can spread off the ball. If you got that primary ball player, just say if you got a junior Paula, you got to give him some space. Yeah, especially on the, if he's attacking the left side of the field, he likes an overs and a little bit of a tip and out the back, so he can't jam into his real estate. That's what I always say. Like, don't cover everyone's real estate. Stay in your own lane. Yeah. If you, and that's all about combinations, you know. So um, I'm not sure what they're going to do with nine. They're sort of trying to they're trying to talk 
Cook out of it. Well, I think if you I look thought at Cook was good, but like he did a, f- a couple of a couple of mistakes. I thought his defense was outstanding. I thought he played good, but I'm thinking they're going to like going to be pushing for Appy. But bench because I mean what worked well for Queensland is Ben Hunt started the game super well. Like, Sorry, would you put Appy on the bench? That's what I'm saying. Yeah, like, if you because I Appy think on the I bench, think you cannot drop Cook. No, nah. but I want Appy to, to to come in there somewhere in the late, even if it's late in the first half. And look at what Quinn's did with Grant. Grant came on, played the ball. Then of that Ben middle, Hunt comes on, makes that made. Thing, and if he passes Hunt into the, if he passes inside to Cherry Evans, it's game over. Yeah, over that's right. With about six minutes to go, so there's maybe, there's there is that need, there's there's something like that. You don't have to go for a player who can cover all the backs positions and all that because a lot of forwards are pretty mobile. They can cover you can cover the centers and all that kind of stuff. You know, like if you're an Isaiah Yoke could probably play in the centers if if worse comes to worse. Cam Murray can play in the centers. You know, like they can play, you can cover those positions, but, you know, like I, w- I would like to give Cook a little bit of a break because he plays a lot of football, that kid. You know, if you give him, if, if, you, if you let him play 60 minutes or like 50 minutes, you're going to get so much explosive action out of him. And then you're going to get more creativity with Appy. And, and he's the, got those combinations with Cleary and Luai. And the game's changed so much, Will. It's so much faster. Maybe the days of an 80-minute hooker in that role in, in origin, origin is over. And I think Queensland have probably proven that with the way that they've been able. So Ben Hunt traditionally would be the 14 and then you come yeah. on. Harry Grant probably could K 80 minutes at origin, but would he be as effective as what he was last night when he came no. in for that middle 50? No way. And knowing that you're not playing a full game, you can go you balls can out. Yourself. You can yeah. go as hard as you can. So like Cook will be going as – Cook knows he had to play 80 minutes. Yeah. So he's, he's sort of pacing himself and, you know, he gets spotted up a fair bit. Yeah. You know, he's, and he, he, his defence has picked up so much. But I just think maybe he needs a little bit of a break and put Appy at 14 and then you can just, you know, you prob- I'll bring Jake back in and probably keep Campbell Gillard and put Frizzell there. Yeah. Something like that. They got, you, you've, got to, you've got to change something because the forwards need to be more dominant. Yeah, for sure. You know what I mean? Stop trying to ball play all the time and try and – you've got to earn that ascendancy in the middle. Just paint hearts, bang, hit that ball up. You know, like Junior Paulo, bang, hit that ball up. Come from the back fence, back rolls in, everyone in attacking the middle until you get down into, into quality ball and then you get into your spaces. You know, so I think very fixable, big, big task. Yeah. Very. This, this would be one of our best series wins if we get this, because that game last night, you'd be sitting in there going, "Fuck, we could have had that." Yeah, this could possibly be the end. I think, and if you look at Queensland, like when their bench came on, Pat Carrigan, he was just he came, his first effort in the whole game was to come off the line yeah. and try and kill. Someone. I can't remember who it was. Maybe Jack Whiten. So that's what they're bringing from the bench. They're bringing more of the same. They're just bringing tough, aggressive, straight up and down. They're going to make go forward. And they're going to... Like, I don't want a bloke that's going to come on and be a beautiful ball player. No. I just don't need that in origin. No, it's not. It's a different beast. It's not club football. No. I mean, like, no disrespect to Madison. He's a good He's a good club player. Decent club player. But, like, his origin's a different beast. Mm. You know, like, you've got to pick origin players. Jake Trebojevic is an origin player. Frizzell's an origin player. I just think you got to have you got to stick with those guys, and they've done the job for the last three or four years, and they've been outstanding. They're playing good at club level. They just, but they're origin players. But going back to Queensland's bench, Lindsay Collins, Carrigan, those dudes were monsters. Unbelievable. They were outstanding. Mm. Like Lindsay's, only, I think this is probably his second or third series, but he was a beast. But Carrigan, I think he made near 180, 190 meters. Yeah. Like he played. Who else is off their bench? So Ben Hunt. And uh, Nanai. Grant, so Nanai, Grant, yes. Nanai. Yes. And Harry Grant. Yeah. yeah. So Grant, Nanai, um, Collins and, and Carrigan. And they, they offered so much. They work. were outstanding. Yeah. Every single I mean Nanai didn't play that many minutes, but like he still he defended good. Broke his leg and they broke his leg, up. straight back on. Um yeah, it was just one of those games. New South Wales will know if, if they if they executed properly, they could have got that game. Do you reckon sometimes the fact that New South Wales have probably got a bigger pool to choose from. Often they do. Like if you look at the player pool and there's all these yeah. things. Mate, if Queensland lose by two points last night, Queensland ain't made one change. No. They play that. That 17 will play, barring yeah. injury, the whole way through. You look at New South Wales. New South Wales, if they won by a little bit, then you'd probably say, oh, they were a bit weak there. Then they chop and change. Queensland just every year, they go, there's my 17. That's it. Yeah. We're done. 
Do you make changes for New South Wales? You can't, kind of have to, but that suggests to me that they picked the wrong players in the first place. Like it's, I don't mind change if the change improves things, and mm. I think the changes here would improve things. I think they because I the think wrong we side. just do. I think we have players that weren't playing that should be playing. Yeah. That's the thing. We yeah. don't we don't have players that are injured or anything like that, and these guys aren't aren't, aren't available. Everybody's available. Pick the best team. And you're not saying let's pick a bloke that's played eight first grade games and throw him in. You're saying let's pick Tyson Frizzell, let's pick Jake Boyce, let's pick blokes that have won series doing the tough stuff yeah. that win series. They do, they're origin players. Yeah. Pick origin players. You know, like like I just yeah, I, it wasn't I, if if we had a one we wouldn't be sitting here no. talking about it. But we lost, so yeah. we are talking about it. Yeah. So there has to be not how like not massive changes, but you know, I like Appy. I like Jake and I like Frizzell. Yeah. Just fit them in there somewhere. The back line, they were outstanding, the backs. I thought we just didn't execute right. Um, there was a couple of times when we could have pulled the trigger and, and we could have scored a couple of really good defensive like moves from Queensland. You know, they were just they were just attacking in defense. They were working so hard. That you could just tell from the first 20 minutes, I'm like, yeah, this is going to be a game. Then, like, you know, those, those tries that they scored, they were easily fixed, that scrum try. And then the Holmes try. You know, that's just basic defence. It's not, you know, like you shouldn't know, shouldn't be able to score tries like that in Origin. No. You know, like especially from that like Cherry Evans one, you got to earn those tries, man. Yeah, that was. And when it's man on man on the short side, when the pong is there, like you got to put inside pressure, you got to get off that line, big pain, and jam his ribs, make him play early, and then it's just man on man, and you end up pushing Holmes out the sideline. Yeah. You know, that's how defence works, and um. That's just, you know, just inexperience sometimes. And that's what happens when – that's what Ponga tries to do. He would try and exploit and try and get a big guy on a short side. But yeah. Payne Haas moves good. He's not – you know, he just sat back. He sat back and he just sat on his heels and went sideways. That's all Ponga wants. Mm. And he looks for that. But if he had to come straight off the line and just beeline for him and cut his – like trying and, try and make him come off his left foot. Because you, you know he, he wants to do that little bit of a goose step, get you, get you in your – catch you on your heels – and then, then the other guys shit themselves, and then they all come in a little bit. Payne Haas comes straight off the line, jams his ribs, done. If he comes off his left foot, he runs straight back into the markers. That's where you want him to do it. Mm. But you just don't want him to get on the outside you like that. And see, and exactly what how Cam Murray scored that try. You got DCE turning in. Yeah. You know, like it's the, the plays were there. Yeah, they look good at they look good you know, in parts New South Wales. Because, you know, uh Luai, he has those moves. Yeah. You know, like he can, and you got to exploit Cherry Evans because he's he's known to do that. Turns his shoulders in a lot. Gags always goes out a little bit. So I'd be attacking there. So that's where they had all all the um all the fun there. You know, and Cam Murray runs those great lines. Hmm. You know, you could have pulled the trigger there early in the first half if he was starting. He didn't get on there to the last ten minutes. All right. Well, we'll solve the problems of state of origin yeah. coming up. I must say, actually, I, I watched. So I, I normally, to be honest, I normally watch Foxtel, not Channel Nine. Obviously, Channel Nine's got the rights to the origin, yeah. and you weren't watching it, but um, you were obviously out there. But um, people were bagging the Channel Nine commentary. I liked it. I thought it was all right. Why? What were they saying? I don't know. Because Cam it. Smith was in there. I don't know why, but I was like, you know, and I listen to Joey, and I listen to, and Joey's a. I don't people. I think he's a great commenter. His knowledge of the game's phenomenal. Oh yeah. Same with Phil Gould. So if you're watching, everyone's like, oh, anyone who's watching Channel 9, I'll get your Foxtel subscription. But what, what, what do they want him to say? I don't know. Everyone has to whinge about everything, don't they? Eh, Everybody shut up. whinges. Speaking of whinges, William, we'll move on to the uh, the coaching roundabout. Since uh, since the coach are made now. <laughs> who's it on? Who's it on now? They got to three this year already. So we've got Michael Maguire. He's gone. Oh, two in a day, wasn't it? Yeah, two in a day. Two in a day. That's got to be a record. I think it is. I think three in a year has got to be. I'm going to get Henry to the research. What's happening, Henry? Week, but yeah, three in a year has who, got who to be. Who else got sacked? So, well, Brown, Brown. Oh, Brown just said, "I'm, I'm, I'm not going to New Zealand." I don't want to move to New Zealand. You, they're the New Zealand Warriors, Nathan. They're Did you called, not read the fine print? They need to bring a map to the negotiation. Do you know New Zealand's not in Australia? It's not the Gold Coast. <laughs> it's not the Gold Coast Warriors, it's a different mate. Different spot. It's actually a different spot. Oh, look, the Maguire one for me is the funniest one. And what it shows me is that West Tigers as a club are just so indecisive. It's mm. like they've been dragging this on for so long. Why not sack the bloke six weeks ago? Yeah. And they sack him now and they've got no coach. They bring Kamali in as a caretaker. So that's season gone. You know what I mean? Like it's, you're saying the next players, year you're going to have a decent roster. You're going to have big pub, big public if you're powering. You're going to have Appy. Yeah. They're going to change your whole team. Yeah. Like at least give him a decent team. Give him a chance. You know, like it's... um. 
That's disappointing. But that was always going to happen. It was always going to happen if 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 they got off to the start like they are now. And the other and thing they wanted to get rid of him last year. But it's they they had the buy right. Sack him two weeks ago. Sack him on the Monday after the last game, so that at least a new coach has got two weeks to get to introduce himself to his players. Why sack him on the Monday? Of the week after your buy. <laughs> like, it's like Maguire's turning up going, I could have had a weekend off here. I could oh, have. man. It's bizarre. I've, I, I just find this whole coaching roundabout thing so ridiculous. And you know what? There's not that many coaches out there. No. There's well, no there Craig Bellamy's isn't. and Wayne Bennett's. There's no, there's no one out there. There's a lot of young kids. I think Serraldo is like, he's probably one of the best young up-and-coming coaches around. you got your Josh Hannays, Jason Riles, John Morris's. Like, they're not household names you know what I mean like they've had a bit of first grade experience and stuff but like they're not the I don't know I'm not sure like there's there's not that many arcs, just ask the Bulldogs if you, you don't know who's you don't know who's going to be the coach you are like you honestly like you honestly don't know who is going to coach the Bulldogs in the, uh, next year mm. you know like like who are the options and how do you sign players like how do those three clubs now go out into the player market and go, you should come and play for us. Or who's your coach? Don't know. Yeah, we don't know yet. Don't know. But we'll figure it club. out. We'll figure it out. You'd, you'd be fine. Good strip. <laughs> That's what I mean. Nice like, I just don't. I, I don't understand. It'd be so hard. Well, the week after Origin is always the worst tipping week because you don't know who's going to play. I'll tell you, you won't be playing for the Cowboys, Reuben Cotter and Jeremiah Nanai. I bet Reuben Cotter plays. He probably will, actually. And play 80. <laughs> he's a machine, mate. He's just like, he's cut from that cloth. Where'd they get him from? I think, well, actually, on the TV yeah, last Reuben night, Cotter. Um, Kalen Ponga said, they said, oh, who do you think, you know, point someone out? And he said, look, I don't like to single out one person, but I've known Ruben Cotter, Ruben Cotter since I was 13. So presumably he came through up that North? North Queensland system as yeah. well because Ponga was up in that system. Right. Um, I mean, obviously. Just a went, toiler, isn't he? Yeah. Like, I'm not, he's not young, is he? He's like, like 24, 25. Yeah, I, I think it's, and this is really his first year of mm. getting time in first grade. And that's the thing with, I don't know, I think he played hooker for a while and then he just went, you know what, how about I just become fit and play in the back row? And well, then he they has went, 10 on his back as well. Yeah, I know, he plays anywhere. <laughs> but he's like, surely that sort of player, he's been playing like for five, like he didn't suddenly decide in 2022, I'm going to play like this, I'm just going to get heaps fit. I'm not sure when he debuted. I'm not, I, I, all I remember is just watching he's him in the first the couple of rounds. Year. First couple of rounds, I'm like, this guy goes all right. He goes yeah. good. Like he works hard. He's got origin sort of written all over him. Like mm. he does all those little little dirty things that no one really likes to do. He hits the ball up hard. He tackles hard. He runs hard. Like he just does everything good. Well, what a find. He's a good find. I, I actually love him. I think he's one of those players that you know you can build a side around for ten years because he's just a player that everybody knows. Yeah, he's a turn he's up. that kid that everyone wants to play with. Uh, the Dragons and the Cowboys. So Nanai's no hope. They've named them all. Dearden will play. The, look, the Cowboys will still win that. Ben Hunt, he'll probably be on the piss still. <laughs> he doesn't <laughs> even drink, I don't think. No, he doesn't. Tarek Sims, <laughs> Tarek Sims will be Tarek crying. Sims was outstanding last night. I thought he was really good. Yeah. I think he was one of our better forwards. You'll get arguments on that too just because of that one play. Because that one play where he pushed across, you'll find people go, Tarek Sims played badly. But Well, that's what I say. That's all about game. trust. And yeah. I think he knows that he went probably too hard. Try to, he- try to hedge his bets. Trying to help his outside men when you're the main thing is is your inside. So yeah. um, you know he would have been relying on on Paulo or, or the other the, the lock to cover his space. You know that's what happens. Just a, just a simple mislap. Mate, outstanding, Tarek. Defensively, everything he hits like a truck. Ran some good lines. You know, just before Paulo got that try disallowed, he set that try up. Got that really really good run. Um, that what do you think about that? The the Paulo try, no try. It's if you're sticking with the rules, it's. Well, I mean, it's pretty. If it's uh, so, the letter of the law, it's it's a hundred. He's outside no shoulder too. Yeah. So, uh, look, uh, it just I don't sort know. of grabbed him a little bit. Did, would he really have stopped him? I don't think you're stopping Paulo he's from 120 there. 120 kilos coming. And he was pace, coming. And he was like he was, he was moving. I felt oh, that. Yeah, that 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 sucked. But it is the rules. I know. I it's get the it. Rules. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> get it. Uh, the Titans and oh, there we go. Titans will get their coach sack next. Holbrook. Mm. He could be number four for the year. So if he doesn't win, the Titans need to sack him immediately and sign <laughs> Nathan Brown or Michael Maguire on the spot. The Titans, I don't know, if they don't start winning games soon. Because they have a good side. That's the problem. Yeah. 
You know, like um, they got like four, like four Origin players or something like that. You got mm. Tino there. You got, I mean, Fafita's been injured. You got Fodawaka, um, Brimson, Jared Wallace, Jared Wallace. Like they're all some Origin. really good, good kids, man. It's just like they just not, players. they just don't string it together that well. So is that the coach? I mean, if you if just say for example, you put Craig Bellamy in to, in in charge of this Titans side They're top for the 18. rest of this year, right? Does would would that short amount of time would that amount of time with a good coach change anything to do with the side? Like if you look at the Tigers or or Nathan Brown at the Warriors, and you sign Wayne Bennett or Craig Bellamy or, or Trent Robinson, and you sign them right now, immediate change. The season, immediate would there change. Be immediate change. Immediate change. You reckon they yep. would? That's the sort of co- coaches they are. They demand excellence. They get the best. They get that extra twenty percent out of the, those players. They'll be ta- they'll be getting David Fafita. As I said, I've been saying it all year. Go in the middle. You start Tino at prop. Put Fodawaka there or Jared Wallace. You put Fafita at lock. He can attack any edge he wants. He can defend on an edge if he gets if he gets tired. But play that kid about sixty minutes in the middle and let him just destroy teams by himself. You know, everyone's going, oh, he's what? What about his defense? He can hit. Yeah, he's just got to make when he's when you when, when you're on an edge, you're more you have to be more effective. You have to make more dominant tackles and all that kind of stuff. More one on ones in the middle. He got a lot of help there, mate. Mm. You know, he's fit enough. You know, you just got to get him. Get him the ball. He needs twenty to twenty-five touches a game. Yeah. He's got skills like a halfback. Don't just think that he's a ball. He's a destructive runner. He has got a high skill set. So, mate, pay, put, just put him at lock. You know what I mean? Like, don't waste that kid's talent. Yeah. Like he's just like he's sitting there on the right edge, mate. If, if you're a defensive team, if you're a defensive system, you're putting that one extra over there. You know, you just you're going up there. You, you try and shut all his time down. You can take him out of the game, but if he's at lock and he can attack on the left side and the right side, mate, good luck. Good luck. You know, like you can't, you can't just be sitting. You can't put a player like that on one edge. It'd be like putting me or Sonny Bill and you stay on the left edge. Nah, man, I'm going on the right side. I'm going on the left. I'm playing wherever I want. Mm. Which is, that's what we used to do. Like just say Bobcat. Bobcat was probably the only one who would stay on the left edge because he, like, he was just he was just great at it. Like, but like Sonny would be like, I'd be in the in the middle. We could attack wherever we want. Yeah. Like, and if Bobcat would sometimes drift over to the right side if he saw something, and then Sonny would just go left edge. And then I'd be in left edge or something like that, or Roy could be there. Like, you just got to be, you got to be a footballer now. You just got to be able to play anywhere you want, wherever they put you, play. Don't just pigeonhole yourself to one position. Coaches shouldn't do that to great players because you take a lot of football out of them. You take the natural football out of them. You played in a fair park, didn't you? Yeah. When you- <laughs> You think about the names. Everyone, just everyone just sort of. They should. Too. Everyone should just do what we did when we had the best pack in the issue of the game. Everyone should just do that. Okay. Um, all right. Well, we'll sack Holbrook next. Yeah. He's on the list. He's going to have the coach meter. He's at number one. And I've known. I know his nickname's Titsy. Titsy. Yeah. Titsy. For he, the he was. He was at the Dogs when I was when I first got down there in '98. Oh really? Yeah. He played for the Dogs. He was our halfback. Really? Yeah. I didn't know tits. that. There you go. I don't think I don't think the players call him tits. So oh, um, they call him Mister. Just call him call him Titsy now, boys. <laughs> <laughs> we won't go into why. Uh, the Roosters and the Storm. This would have been a good game if the Roosters weren't so terrible this year. Look, look. To be honest, the Raiders, um, the Raiders pulled their pants down in Canberra, and, and often the Raiders do pull the Roosters' pants. Like it's the Ricky Raiders Stewart. Got, that's Ricky. That's a Ricky yeah. Stewart factor. He would have had those guys up so big. Yeah. Because they got beaten that grand final, he would never forget that. He play, he coached the Roosters, he hates the Roosters, all that yeah. kind of stuff. So he's that sort of coach. He can get those guys up for that game. But I think I think the Roosters will bounce back. I've, I've backed the Roosters here. I, I don't think, think yeah. I just don't think the Storm uh, as dominant as they are. No, they're not. And as Coates, I don't know what happened to Coates, but he's not like he's, poor bugger. He looks he's, like that, that was looked an awful. He's he still toughed it out too. He still had a hit up. Like he's there. just that's that Queensland spirit. No, it's not. <laughs> I think the Roosters, the Roosters is a really important game for them because if they've started to lose their aura and they've got a pretty hard run in the next few weeks. Is Hargraves playing? I think he is. He's the key. Yeah, I think he is. And you know, and Lindsay Collins, like he's got to have some, he's got to bring back that that ferociousness that he puts on when he when he's puts yeah, that jersey where's on. That? Where's that for the I Roosters? I want that every week. Yeah, he knows you can do it. You know, he like he plays at the, at the hardest level, he does that. And he needs he needs to be like that young bull. Hargraves is 33. Yeah. And he's still dominating games. He comes in and out of games sometimes, you know, like, and but Lindsay Collins should be that young kid, get the ball like a young ogre, you know what I mean? Like just terrorising teams and Hargraves does it, you know, gets off the back of him instead of Hargraves doing it maybe all the time. Maybe Collins is scared that 
Hargraves wants to be the big bear and he just maybe you know, you know maybe I'll maybe be, Hargraves is like I'm still that dude. I'll, I'll be like okay. But it's just enough. like hey, you know, don't, don't maybe yell, maybe don't yell at me, Mister. Yeah, maybe Hargraves. maybe it's my time. <laughs> Give me my time. Uh, the Broncos and the Raiders. I can't believe the Raiders are two seventy five here. Broncos have got a fair few players. Stags will be out. Reynolds is back. They've kept that Reynolds. young. Um, they've kept that young five eight Ezra Mam too. Yeah, um, okay, it's good. Off the old, bench. Off the bench. No, he's starting. They've got rid of old Woodstock Gamble. Old. Spill your Woodstock and punch you in the face. <laughs> but um, Ezra Mam's starting. So, I don't know. It'll be interesting to see how he goes. I think, you know, he's had a pretty easy run the first two weeks because no one knew who he was. But the Tides will do their mm-hmm. – they'll do their <clears> research <throat> on him now. And I reckon the I reckon Canberra a chance of an upset, upset there. Yeah. It's up it's up there, isn't it? It'll it's be up hard. There. It'll be – yeah, I think the Bronx will be – they're pretty hard to beat up there now. Mm. And they've got some confidence. These guys like Flegler and, and Carrigan – well, they got Carrigan, coming out. You got Payne Haas, so Payne Haas will be pissed off, and he'll want to he'll he'll want to play good. They got a few. He'll want to play good. You got Cobbo, who's just young and nineteen. He could just play anywhere. He'll play. Um, who else? You got Flegler, who'll be disappointed in in not making the Origin side, but he was part of the squad. Um, who else? Kurt Cape. Well, you know, you got, you got players. They're going to bring so much. So once you play that Origin game and you win, you have this aura and you have that bit of swag. You know, yeah. and they got what five or six players. Regardless, yeah, of, you know, like Payne Haas will bring back that confidence as well. They, do you know what? The New South Wales fans every time he got the ball cheered him. He'll go up there. They're going to boo him again. Yeah. All right. What did I say last week? Good way to send. What him did back I say down. last week to uh, Brisbane? Bye bye. Shut the fuck up. Bye Payne. You're coming down here now. Uh, the Tigers and the Seagulls at Campbelltown. Did you ever play at Campbelltown Sports Stadium? I did. Why don't they have a? They, no one wants to sponsor that one. We don't, we've got we've got C-Town. McDonald Jones, we've got Seabus, and then we've got. Campbell I have played Town. out there a couple of times. It's not too bad. We used to play in the mid two thousands when the Tigers were pretty good. We used, they used to have about I think they have four home games there a year. Yeah, right. Yeah, I, threw, I nearly threw Brett Hodgson out of the sideline. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Ojo. Uh, Manly. I'd have mohawk that game. Oh, you have hair over the years. Has yeah, because I remember I was getting a haircut and um, uh, Jamal Alessi. I said, "Look, just you know, fade me up a little bit." And, the, and, and it come off and then it went zero straight on my head. I was like on the side, I'm like, fuck, what are we going to do? Mohawk it. Mohawk it. Mohawk it. <laughs> so I just mad Mohawk and then like folks, he goes, because folks used to hate that shit and he's like, fuck, Mace, what are you doing? I said, it wasn't my fault. It's Jam's fault. He goes, you're a fucking Mohawk now. I said, well, he goes, and then he goes, well, more pressure on you. That's why Wayne Bennett's big on that. No, yeah. no, I could never ever turn up like that. And he goes, because, you know. Shaved the whole thing. Because when, when, when you get beat by 50 or something, your mohawk don't look that cool now. <laughs> anyway, I got me in the match, so it doesn't matter. Oh, you're the best. <laughs> uh, the Tigers, well, they got their new coach. They got old Brett Kamali in charge. Old Noddy, eh? Yep. Caretaker coach. <sighs> what an easy job that is. No, like, no, no one pressure. Expects you. I wonder if you get a pay, do you get a pay rise straight away? I'd doubt it. You got to. Like, what was he doing before that? Assistant coach, and then all of a sudden you're head coach. Just say if you're on, just say 250, 300 as assistant coach. I'd want half a mil. Yeah, but that's you. You're, yeah. You're getting paid that running the can- <laughs> You're running the canteen at Belmore getting that. Uh, Surely, I think I think you do. I don't know. I guess so. That's a, that's a very what, good was he a, was HR was question. He, was he um, assistant coach? Was I he guess part- he would have to be, wouldn't he? They wouldn't just pull him out of corporate. He was, he was what? Yeah, Pathway. like you, yeah. Oh, like you at the dogs. Pathways. That's what I mean. Like if, I, if I go straight to the head coach, I'm like, hey, <laughs> I ain't coaching. Let's just get a bit of a re up here. Hear that cannery? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so you can go from pathways to first grade coach. It's, so Thank you, Noddy. So you're saying there's a so chance. So you're saying there's a chance, mate. Yeah, I can. I cannot see you as head coach. <laughs> uh, the Panthers and the Knights. The Jeez. Oh, okay, Panthers win. Even their reserve grade sides are beating sides. Let's move on. Uh, the Warriors against the Sharks. Who's co- oh Stacey Jones? What about halfbacks from the two thousands coaching care? Oh, Stacey. Stacey. He's taken over as caretaker coach. Oh, I love Stacey Jones. He was one of the best halfbacks. One of the greatest halfbacks of all time, I reckon. Why aren't there more props coaching? Props I don't know. We're, we're pretty smart. We are smart. There's a, I think a couple of them. Let, a couple of them let us down. Mm. But. Understand with rugby, rugby league. When you're in the middle, you understand everyone's job. Yeah. Wingers don't know what forwards do, but we all, we understand what from the inside all the way out because yeah. we have to do that. That's why, like like Todd Payton, he was always a smart player. Yeah, in front rows, we always we're always just sort of like positional coaches now. Hmm. You know, but who knows in the next couple of years? Jason Rolls. Yeah, Rolls is in there. 
I hope the war. I, look, I really, really hope that the Warriors win. I think. Hang on, I'll, I'll read you something here that's been uh, that was provided to me by Henry. That says about uh, Reese Walsh. He goes, "We just. It's tough. We go out there and we sabotage ourselves. There's no other way to put it. Put ourselves under pressure. We keep doing it every week. It's not good enough. There's patches where we don't get it. Make it easy for the team." We've just got to go home and look at ourselves in the mirror. Just ask ourselves, do we really want to be here? Do we really want to be trying for our mates? At the moment, things we're tossing up, we're not working for our mates. It's first grade and it's not good enough. Now, does that suggest that there's a little bit of, like, they're missing home and there's a bit of trouble in camp? Because to say you're not playing for your mates, Mm. that's something that's usually pretty in-house. Like, you know, boys, we're not... Probably getting sick of each other. Yeah, they would be, eh? You know what I mean? Like the difference is, like, where if you're playing for the Roosters, if you're playing for Brisbane or any other Sydney team, like you get a chance, you go, you go play, you train, you go home to your family. You got your own house, you got your own bed. You don't have to hang out with footballers twenty four seven. No way to escape. Like I get it, I get it. Like it would have been fun for the first year, third year. Mm. They're over it, man. Like yeah. it's just, and you can see like when they. The resilience on the team, like they can they can show brilliance for like, you know, 10, 15 minutes and they go off for like 20 and then they come back and you know, there's not real any consistency in their play. They've still got talent. You know, Sean Johnson's a big key to that. Like if Sean Johnson plays awful, he hasn't been playing good this year and they all roll off him. Yeah. Like he's got every gift that a footballer could have. Everything. Left to right pass, right to left, right foot, this, that. Good looking guy, like marketable, got everything. Like, you expect a lot better from that guy. Yeah. You know, like, and they look up to him like he's a god over there. So, like, you know, he's got a, he's got a big responsibility, probably the most responsibility in that club because when he leads and when he plays good, they play good. When, yeah. they, play, when they play bad, he usually plays bad. You know, he needs to be more consistent. That's all he is. You know, it's not, you know, he's, he's not young anymore. He's not that new kid on the block. He's played over 200 games. He's, he's a superstar, one of the genuine superstars of our game, like, Get paid the big bucks. You got to you got to deliver. And he's he's you know he's got all the talent in the world. It's not like we're talking about a kid who can't play. You know, like that guy's got so much talent. So it's just like you just want to put that, and get it on the field, and just string a couple of good games together. They signed a kid from the Roosters, um, Ronald Volkman, who um, he, he went to Waverley College, and I saw him play Union for school, and he was just a level above everyone else. And he's come through the Roosters grades. They've just signed him, and the Warriors have. What, the Warriors have, yeah. And I tell you what, hopefully if, they get to go home next year. Get him, get it, get him some game time. Because there's nothing worse than playing the Warriors this time of the year, going over there, getting bashed. Awful weather. They go home soon, I think. Yeah, but like just say, just say when you play New Zealand, just say you think it's bad playing Canberra in Canberra. You play New Zealand in New Zealand around about origin time. Mm. You go over there, you get bashed regardless of the score. It's physical as hell. You're hungover. It's the worst trip home. It doesn't matter if you win or lose. And that's why everyone has a bad rap on New Zealand. You just go over there and say, this is the fucking worst place in the world. But like you go there in the summer, it's one of the most beautiful places in the world. But like when you're over there this time of the year, I'm glad you covered that then with a nice thing. It's like but it is. Oh, well, like, like just say when they when they did the nines, like when I was like the world nines. I yeah, mean, yeah. 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 When yeah. we were over there, I was like an ambassador for it. So like, I went from the um, the top all the way to the bottom in the summer. It mm. was beautiful, one of the most beautiful places in the world. Mm. But we the, the NRL players only experience getting flying over the there, the going over there, getting absolutely smashed on and off the field, coming home, and then just hung over as hell, going through airports. Two hours, like, shit could be delayed and you're just like, oh, I fucking hate New Zealand. That's the impression that you get. Like, I don't have that impression anymore. No. But when you're playing, like, 10 years over there, just like, oh, my God. And this is when you're playing against Jerry Sisu and freaking Monty Beetham and all these blokes just l- laying the smack down on you. And I'm pretty much, you know, one of New Zealand's hate, most hated men. So <laughs> it was never, ever a soft game for me. So I had to go out, to go out there and just, like, go balls out every single game. I wasn't bagging the haka, wasn't it? Didn't do it. How do you bag the haka? Shut up. You can't bag the haka. Shut up. Yeah, so then you just, you know, then you have a great night out and then you wake up. It's like a 6 o'clock wake-up call because the flight's early. you two hours before thing you hung over everyone sort of like oh shit body is awful <laughs> you know it takes you three days to get over it and you fucking play again that's the that's that's what the perception of New Zealand is mm. so that, they're alright they get to beat the shit out and just go out and have a good time <laughs> in their own beds uh, the Bulldogs and the Eels Bulldogs oh, back the Bulldogs this. of course you have <sighs> they're gonna win okay Parramatta sorry Parramatta what have they got Madison coming back Paulo all those folks, they might, they might have a rest. They're playing on Monday. 
Still, Still almost a week. Who knows? Madison might be injured. <laughs> Willie's Big Boys. <laughs> yes, Willie's Big Boys. This is an Origin special. Um, so I thought I thought it was an outstanding game last night from both both packs. Pretty much the Queensland one dominated us anyway. So one point I'm going to give it to Tarek Sims because I don't really care what happened off that scrum. I know it was it was it was crucial, but the, how he defended. And the, the runs that he was doing, he was he was he was trying his ass off. He was playing. I thought he was. I thought he was one of our best forwards. I'm not sure about his meters or stats. I just looked at and um, I just thought eyeball test. He was one of our best players. One point to him. Two points goes to Patrick Carrigan. I think he ended up playing his first Origin. What did he play? I think he made 180 something meters hmm. in his first Origin game. That's outstanding. I mean, like I think 38 tackles and just his effectiveness around the ruck and he's just a couple of offloads here and there. Like he just it was a fish to water. Like it's it's he's probably going to play 20 Origins that kid. Oh, for sure. You know what I mean? Yeah. He's got he's got that written all over him. And Ruben Cotter, three points. Welcome back. Welcome back, Ruben Cotter. Um, yeah, I'm not even going to read his stats out. They were ridiculous. 80 minutes, I think 50 something tackles, no misses. Like over a hundred meters gain, like it was just to play eighty minutes. What a in knock! Your first origin. What a just, knock! Does that you know? mean now he can go on the because I, he's not a big boy, is he? Like no, not, mate, he'd be, he'd be pushing a hundred kilo, maybe yeah. like ninety six kilo. He's not can, that big. Is he on the list now? Because I love you know he's my new man crush. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Potter every week now. So this is double points. So all these guys have got. Double points. Okay. All right, he's on six points. <laughs> so Ruben, right. Ruben Cotter's on six points, which will put him in third place. Yes. Carrigan's on four. Tarek's on two. Um, so the leaderboard, still got Campbell Gillard, Talakai Jr., Paulo Painhas, all on eight points. Um, Fisher Harris is on seven. And if I was picking this last week's game, he would have got three points, Fisher Harris. Yeah. Do we give him some points anyway? I want to give him two points because that, what yeah, it, that, fair that enough. we'll give him two. Yeah, points. we'll give him two points. So he's going to be leading on nine points because he was an absolute beast last week. Yeah, Jason Taumalolo and Josh uh, Big Papali on six points. So um, it's going to be pretty tight. I think um, you know Talakai is sort of coming down a little bit. He, he had what three or four games where he got three points. So that was great. So um, yeah, big boys for this week. Do you know what? I don't even know how my bet went last. I know it lost, but I can't remember <laughs> what it was. I don't remember what it was, but I think it lost in many, many different ways. So this week I've gone for South to cover the line, which is six and a half. I've given the Dragons a 12 and a half start against the Wounded Cowboys. Mm -hmm. And I think that Canberra will go close to the Broncos. So they are one to 12. That is a total winning bet. At ten dollars forty six of five hundred and twenty three dollars, that is going to win. It's yeah. going to win. Listen to this, guys. This is the bet of the year. Can I just point out before that I actually haven't put this on yet? I think it's extremely unlikely that any betting agency in the world will accept it. But <laughs> anyway, you, Titans to, for the win one to twelve. Roosters for the win one to twelve. Tigers for the win one to twelve. Alex Twal anytime try scorer. Paul Vaughan, anytime try scorer, which accumulates to three hundred and forty-eight thousand eight hundred and six dollars and twenty-five cents. Now, can you see why? So oh, we're rich, think. boys. We're so I'm rich. rich. <laughs> Do you know what? And if a junior club wins from that bet, then we will give them ten thousand of those yeah, dollars. Yeah, exactly. So well done to but the junior with the, club. With the producer, he's just, this is one of the lowest bets I've ever seen. He's gone into union now. He has no idea about anything union wise. Brumby's thirteen and a half. Crusaders minus eight and a half, and the Panthers to win, whopping two hundred twelve dollars. There you go. That is no dollars. thought. There's That's no, no thought, thought that. producer. No thought in that. Producer's hey? an idiot. Oh, yeah. Hey, Henry, Henry, is... was this you, Henry? Come on, bro. All right, so let's look at the tips for this Jeez. week. William, how are you behind? You're only six behind. Me. Hey, hey. All right, I've got, the I've got the Cowboys, Titans, Roosters, Broncos, Tigers, Panthers, Sharks, and Bulldogs. And I've gone the Cowboys, the Rabbits, the Storm, the Broncos, the Eagles, the Panthers, the Sharks, and the Eels, which means 
What have we got? What yeah, number are you on? 69. <laughs> <laughs> grow up. Uh, you grow up. You grow up. Producer, Cowboys, Rabbits, Storms, Broncos, Sea Eagles, Panthers, Sharks, Eels. No, he's just copied me. Just yeah. copy. That's all right. It means I'm still anyway. in front. Now, let's have a quick look and see what... We've got some questions. ...the Twitter. I forgot to put it on uh, until recently, so let's have a look. We've got a couple. Uh, changes you'd make to the Blues squad? Yeah, um... Kind of at the moment, it. yeah, we did cover it, but like I'm, I'm making room for Appy Karas, uh, Frizzell, and I'm bringing Jake Trebojevic back in. Okay, I'm not sure who for, but that's why I'm not a selector. <laughs> that's that's why you're the pathways manager at the Dogs. Exactly, leading us into the next Slash. question: Who should coach the Dogs next year? There, <coughs> it is Mason. very, very hard. Pathways it is very team. hard to um to even get a good coach out there now. They're all taken. Um, I'm not sure, mate. I think there's gonna, there's a lot of people going to throw their hands up. You know, you you want to be you want to be part of the solution if you're a young coach. Um, there's you know the club's on the way up. This is you know obviously things aren't going good right now, but you know there's going to be a few coaches out there. I think um, you know Jim Dimmick would fit the club good, knowing that he has played for the club, um, knows the culture of the club. Um, you know, I think like young Cameron Serraldo's out there. What, uh, about, then, what about him? Honestly, I'll tell you what with Cameron Serraldo. Every single time someone sacks a coach, they throw his name into it. As soon as this bloke starts coaching first grade, if he loses four games in a row mm. to start, then everyone's going to turn on him. Oh, I thought you were a yeah. genius coach. I feel for the bloke. Yeah, I'm, and I think you know how you know he's been assistant coach for like five years. You know, yeah. maybe you know if, if the price is right and the teams and the teams heading in the right direction, maybe. You know, maybe Gus can and can work some magic, but like you know, he's he's pretty happy out there. He's probably going to win another premiership out there. He might he might be super happy. You know, um. So I don't I don't know. I honestly don't know, mate. It's um it's it's a hard one. You know, who else is out there? Like Maguire's out there now. Flanagan's the out there now. Sacked. I think Christian Wolf might be out there. Like, there's a lot of there's a lot of coaches, but do they want to coach? Mm. You know, like you know. The Craig Bellamy's and the you know and all these guys they're all, they're never going to be here. It's a pretty brutal. Wayne place, Bennett's you know like who wants to be a coach right now? Not me. Brett Kamali. All right. Well, that right. concludes the show yeah. for this week. Rate and review. Special. Rate review. Comment. Rate and review. We'll Send be tweeting, thing, tweeting tweet. all over. Yeah. Follow us. Masonstake Thank you, everyone. Goodbye. Bye bye. I'll be following Willie more and more. Back in the NRL is Willie Mason. I've forgotten how big Willie actually is. Perhaps the presence of Willie and the Panthers looking at his imposing frame. I'm a 25 minute man. Wow. Oh, you got skills, son. Uppercut right hand by Big Willie. Too fancy for you. You've been listening to The Take with Willie Mason and co-host Ian Byrne. Produced by Craig Trewick, recorded and engineered by Zig Parker of Green Room Sydney, and presented by the Handshake Media Network.